I was on a trampoline with my friend. It was the middle of the day. I was 17 and she asked me the loaded question. What do you want to do as a job when you get older? Such a simple question. Just <laughs> a question with no answer. I remember that was one of the first times I really was confronted with talking with somebody specifically about this. I just kind of coasting through life, doing my interests, doing whatever, and now I was faced with this question. And I d had no idea. I was going off to college the next year, and this was uh, becoming a looming question as I wanted to select my major and figure out where I wanted to go to school, and blah, blah, blah. I just felt extremely ill-equipped to even have an opinion on what I wanted to do. And it's because I didn't have enough experience in anything, even though I had a lot of different things that I like to do. I like to play music, I like researching health, I liked playing sports, but none of it it felt like, it didn't feel like me. What did I want to commit the rest of my life to researching was, yeah, an, an impossibility to answer at that time. Like, I truly believe that it was impossible for me to answer right then. And I feel like that's how it is with a lot of people, yet we're always asked that, we're forced to answer that question. But so it's really interesting now that I have a lot of experience doing other things in my life. I, I like to think back, what interest have I kind of been uh, furthering as I get older? What is it that I find a lot of uh, interest in. If I had the clarity that I have now, where would I be if I had chosen something different? And that's not to say that I wish I could go back and uh, do my path differently, and I wish I was someplace else. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just an interesting like thought experiment, I guess. See, I went to college for English and creative writing, and that has helped me immensely with just thinking and being able to write scripts and formulating thoughts. I have a podcast called The If Then Podcast and writing, I mean, is literally everything for that podcast. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without what I learned in college. But I found myself going down a path in my free time that is surprising, but expected in the words of my creative writing teacher. Surprising yet expected is the best way to describe it. I don't really have a clever way to segue to the sponsorship of this video, so I'm just gonna do it the most awkward way that I know how. Thank you so much Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. Their Memorial Day sale is running now and it is a great time to upgrade your mattress. In three years of working with them, this is the greatest deal that I've ever seen on the site. You can get 25% off your purchase for a limited time, so make sure to check their site for details. When you support them, you directly support me. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses to fit your unique needs and preferences based on your body type and sleep style. With a lot of options for mattresses on their site, how they fit you with the perfect mattress for you is really unique, fun, and does not take long at all. Everybody is different, and Helix knows that. So they developed this really smart sleep quiz that fits you with the perfect mattress for you. Sarah and I could not agree on which mattress to get because we are such different sleepers. She's a side sleeper while I'm unfortunately a stomach sleeper, and we both like slightly different firmnesses. So we took the Helix sleep quiz together as a couple, which is really cool that you can do that. And they fit us with the Helix Sunset Lux mattress, which could not fit our needs any better. It was the perfect one for us. I want you to experience that first night of Helix sleep like we did. Take their sleep quiz by clicking the link down in the description below. The best part about all of this is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door. And in the US, it's even free delivery. It just comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set it up yourself. If you're a little nervous to buy something online that you haven't tried yet, that's honestly how I am, there's no need to worry because Helix has a 100 night sleep trial, so that's three months to make sure that you love it. Plus, Helix mattresses have a 10 year warranty, and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans, so the perfect night's sleep is literally available for everyone. I love my Helix, and I really think that you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Again, their Memorial Day sale is running now, so it's the perfect time to upgrade your sleep. It's really hard to beat 25% off your Helix mattress and two free pillows. Click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash Jordan Taylor to find out more about this limited time offer. Now an awkward segue to the rest of the video. When I was a kid, math was like my 
worst nightmare. Literally, I would, <laughs> I, I had such anxiety around doing math. And looking back, I realized I was actually decent at it. Even though I thought I was stupid, I realized now I was actually good at it. I'm pretty sure I actually scored higher in math on my ACT than I did English, which absolutely shocked me. Side note, I thought that I got like, when I was doing the English part of the ACT, I was like, dude, I got like a 34 on this. Got it back and like, I don't know what English they were, they learned, whoever wrote that. <laughs> I literally believed I got almost every question right and it was not nearly my highest score on the on the test. So I took algebra one, algebra two, uh, geometry, trigonometry, then analytical geometry, I was learning all about proofs and all this stuff. And it was something that I was pretty good at now looking back, but I just didn't find an, really any enjoyment in it because I didn't know what the point was. I could look at a, you know, a problem and find the proof in the book or, you know, have it memorized. Who cares? Who, who cared? I didn't have like a reason to be doing it. And I think that that's a really big problem in teaching kids math because math is actually really cool and really, really exciting. If you have a practical application for it, in school, you're not given like a project that you're building towards to be able to accomplish something really cool. You're just taught to do a bunch of problems and be motivated by, you're gonna get to the end of the book. What grade do you get? That's your motivation. It's not like, oh, we're learning this for this reason. And I get that math, you have to like build on it. I understand that, but there needs to be a reason. It's just not exciting. For the majority of people, it's a huge stress. So as I got older and got married and bought my own house and started building stuff for my house and like building chicken coops, building structures, building houses, building all sorts of different stuff using concrete, it all just started to make sense. I, I was starting to realize, oh, you can use the Pythagorean theorem in real life to make sure that your deck is square when you're when you're building your deck. That is a practical application for doing that. And it was really, really cool to see. I'm building an underground doghouse for my two great Pyrenees and learning how to build a concrete roof. And all you have to do to make that stable and not crack and break with the rebar was just so fascinating to me and I just realized I wanted to understand all of this kind of stuff. Like the physics behind it and the math, I started to find that I was starting to get interested in math again. As I got closer to things in life, I wanted to know like what makes a car engine work? How how does an airplane actually fly? I started to get more interested in like the behind the scenes nitty gritty kind of uh, aspects of the world. And then I came across a guy named Mike Patey who uh, makes YouTube videos and he is a general aviation magician, I would say. This guy is insane how he literally builds airplanes from scratch. He, he welds the frames together, he designs the frames and the airplanes completely in SolidWorks. He does all this crazy stuff and it just blew me away that a single individual could have an understanding to be able to do that. This guy I found out to no surprise was an engineer. And that's when I went down the rabbit hole of, can you do engineering from home? Not get the degree, but what does it take to be able to learn this from home? Cause it's gotta be possible. I mean, for instance, my fifth cousins are the Wright brothers and they're not college educated. These guys read books, they did the hard job of teaching themselves, and they were able to design the first airplanes to have the first successful manned flights. And that is just one of the most inspiring things to me personally. I've been reading all about their lives in uh, David McCullough's book, The Wright Brothers. And yeah, I mean, they're just, just home learners, just always observing, always tinkering, always working and just having a great understanding of the world. And that just has inspired me immensely. So I decided, okay, I wanna, I really wanna go down this more like, what, what do engineers learn? What, what, like, what, what do they take 
that the rest of us don't take so that they can understand like just how the world works. So I found a YouTuber named Zach Starr who actually has a video about all of the math classes that mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers, what math classes they would need to take to be able to pass and get a job. So I decided that I was going to start. I was going to go through more math books as an adult. Uh, this is pre-calculus and uh, I'm gonna go through this and then I'm gonna go and do calculus. And then I'm in the middle of doing a book about statics, which is a, a great YouTuber named Jeff Hansen has a statics course, which is all about physical systems that don't experience acceleration, but that have a constant force uh, on the system. And that has been really, really interesting to, to go through as somebody who was never interested in math because I couldn't find any practical application for it. This was like the first thing that I ever saw it was like, oh, this is the practical application for math. I took a physics high school course, but I also want to do a physics college course and a thermodynamics course. I don't really want an engineering degree. I just want to understand the world better. So I don't know if like I, 10 years ago, should I have done engineering? I, I, I mean, I really, I, I don't think so, but I'm realizing now that I'm older and there's no pressure to do any of this stuff or to do any math at all, that it's really, really fun. And I find a lot of enjoyment in doing it and, and just the learning process behind it and the practical application of it all. My dad is an aerospace engineer and you know, growing up, he's like your dad has a job, okay. But like now, I, that's like really, really cool to me that he took all those classes and he has always had just a really, really full understanding of the physical world. And that's been really helpful to me uh, growing up to better understand things and just have a good perspective on the world. And, and I think a lot of that uh, kind of deep understanding and deep thinking kind of came from the aerospace background. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this knowledge of engineering. I just wanna be able to build things. I just want to be able to have an understanding of the physical world that gives me this superpower of being able to understand enough to build anything that I want to. So if my life's path had not gone down YouTuber, if I had a clone of myself and went down another route, do I wish that it was engineering? Yes, I do. I think that that would just be the coolest thing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. And what's something that you're starting to want to learn now that might kind of surprise you? You wouldn't have suspected like 10 years ago. Let me know. See ya.